<laughs> okay, so the first question is, how many stages does this distillation go? <laughs> oh my god. Wow, Sorry. look at that. <laughs> okay. um, let's go, Caroline. Oh, really? Uh, four? Okay, so four. So, are you counting off of your operation line, or are you counting off of the equilibrium line? The equilibrium line. Okay, so, we have four stages. So, as you count them here, you have one, two, three, four. Everyone go with that? Yes. Okay, awesome. So then our next question is, is um, our next question is, what's the mole percent in the uh, acetonitrile rich product? Okay. Uh, Michael. <laughs> I have about 65 percent. Okay, so 65%. So that is like here? Like right at, that point. Okay. at this point? Yeah. Okay. So you're acetonitrile rich. So this is acetonitrile. And so rich means that it has a high, higher X. So he is right to say this. So with that, what is our nitrile poor or our water rich composition that's coming out of our column? Nay! 2%. 2%. So that's on the op opposite spectrum, right? Okay. So that means it's over here. So our two outputs coming out are going to be our water-rich phase here, and then our nitrile-rich phase up here at 66%. Okay, so good job, you guys. <laughs> oh gosh, that's not good. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So, what is the percent of um, nitrile in the liquid and vapor? in the feed stage. So let's hear the liquid is Annie. 9%? 9% in our liquid. So is this our feed stage? No. What about this one? He was drunk. Is this our feed stage? <laughs> no. Is, is this our feed stage? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so why is this our feed stage? Because it's when the slope changes, um, so that's the feed Okay, so you, what you're saying is we have this line here with a certain slope, and this line here with another slope, and so our feed stage is the stage that has both of the two slopes encompassed in it, correct? Okay, so this here is our feed stage, and so it's 9% in liquid. So then what is it in vapor? Uh, Allie. Fifty-two percent. Okay, so this is our fifty-two percent here and nine percent here. Okay, so good job. Yes. Which one is the x or the y the percent of liquid? Okay, good point. Okay, so our liquid is our x and our vapor is our y. So when you're working with diagrams like these, you have to remember that um, it's exactly like Andrew was saying about if it's, uh, you can determine if it's more volatile or if it's less volatile um, compared to the other component based on if you're getting more liquid or more vapor out. Um, so as you can see on this line here, um, if you have something, say, here, you're going to have um, not very much liquid or yeah, not very much liquid and more vapor, which means that acetyl nitrile is the vapor rip, is the more volatile component, um, and then it switches as you cross the um, the x y line. So our next question is, what is the ratio of the liquid vapor flow rates in the rectifying section? So which line is the rectifying section? Steven. The, the one that you're kind of going with. The bottom line or the top the line? line? The top line. Okay. So something that... Mm, I disagree. You disagree? Yes. Okay. So you think that the rectifying line is this line? Yes. Okay. So something that my separations TA taught me and it stuck with me. It's really easy to remember. So when... It's kind of funny. So when you change, you strip down. So when you strip down, that means that the bottom line is your stripping section and the top line is your rectifying section. That's just an easy way to understand. 
thought the rectifying section was the top of the column. You thought the rectifying section was the top of the column? Yes. The rectifying section is is at the top of the column. I thought that that line was like the bottom of the, the top of the column. Mm -hmm. No, so this is the bottom of the column here. All right, never mind. And this is the top of the column here. Because you think about it, the top of the column um, is going to be yeah, more makes, vapor. That makes more sense. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. So if you look at the diagrams that um, Andrew Brennan passed out, you can kind of go between those and be able to understand. That might help a little bit with your X and Y line. Okay, so we've agreed that this is the rectifying line. The top line is the rectifying line. So how do we find the liquid to vapor ratio? Joel. Well, you can find the slope because you have the initial points of liquid and the final points of liquid and the initial point of vapor and the final point of vapor. Okay. So you can use that to determine the slope. Okay, so now I know the slope. How do I find L over V? Well, the, well you have the liquid, like, the liquid's going to be the final liquid point minus initial liquid point, so it's going to be the X2 minus X1, and uh -huh. then the V is going to be Y2 minus Y1. Okay, so the slope of the line is the ratio L over V. Yes. Okay, so that's some, yes. That's not quite right, is it? Because the slope of the line is uh, y over x, which is v over x. Okay. So isn't it the opposite? Is, is that wrong? I don't what were you saying again? y is a fraction of acetonitrile over vapor, and then x is the fraction of acetonitrile over liquid. So you have 1 over vapor divided by 1 over liquid, you have 1 over vapor. Okay. I'm proud to remember what Andrew told us exactly that last week, right? Does anyone remember Andrew? Yeah, last week? He remembered it. <laughs> um, okay, so our liquid, so what did you get for the value? Well, I did the wrong half of the column. So. Okay, who did the, the top line? Uh, what did you get, Eric? I got one to two, approximately. One over two? Yeah. Okay, everyone else get that? Now your head? Okay, awesome. So, now we are going to go into the next diagram that we've been given. So does anyone have any questions about this before we move on? Does, do we sort of understand this diagram? If not, feel free to ask after the presentation. Okay. So here is this. And so our question is to label the four regions. So we have this region, this region, this region, and the bottom region. So where is vapor? Nick? Top region. Top region. So the vapor's up here. Why is vapor up, up here? Uh, because the two, uh, the two lines, like the top line and the bottom line, represent the two front line and the bottom line. And so one represents the vapor, one represents the liquid. But I mean, how do we know that this one up here is vapor? Because uh, it's at a higher temperature. Higher temperature. Okay, there we go. So in temperature, your diagrams, remember, you increase the temperature, it boils, it's going to be vapor. With pressure, it's the opposite. So you think of your condenser. So as you increase the pressure, you're making it tighter. And as you know, if molecules don't have as much space to move, then they become liquid, right? Okay, so this is vapor, which makes this one down here. <laughs> Salt vapor. And so what are these two in the middle? Everyone. Vapor. Liquid and vapor. Okay, awesome. Okay, so our next question then is um, the distillation column, um, we have it, it's preceded by a heater to match the conditions of our feed stage. Use the phase diagram to determine the temperature of the preheater. Okay, so who would like to solve this one? Someone else, someone new. So you know the conditions of your feed stream. You know that the uh, liquid is going to be nine mole percent. Okay, so we have nine mole percent. And you want, yeah. And your vapor is going to be at fifty-two mole percent. Fifty-two mole percent. So this is your liquid, and then our vapor is at fifty-two mole percent. You want to find where that coordinates on the graph like on the two, the bubble point and the two point line. Okay. And you should have a time line that's going to go to the Okay, so we know that this is vapor, and this is liquid plus vapor, and this is liquid, and this is liquid plus vapor. So what you're saying is that we know we need to get it on a tie line so that we can get those two compositions. So if we look here, 9% is 
is going to be about here, right? So if we follow that up, we hit here. And if we go across, then we find it's 52%. So as this works the exact same way that you saw um, on the graph got with Andrews, in that the azeotrope will match up with this azeotrope here. And so drawing that line, so we have nine and a half, drawing it across gives us 52%. So that's a good check to make sure that, yeah, we're using the right graph. Um, and so then and the very last question we have is what is the ratio of liquid to vapor in the stream leaving the preheater? So did everyone get to this part of the problem? Yes, okay. So who would like to guide me through how we solve this? There's candy. Yeah. Lever rule. Okay. So where should I draw my fulcrum? At point two because the mixture is twenty percent. Okay. So twenty percent acetonitrile, so I draw my le my lever here, my fulcrum here. And then what do I do? Um you find the length of each side. Okay. Okay. And you know that the ratio will be since the liquid is on the left side, uh -huh. it'll correspond to the right side of the lever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. So it's the same lever rule you've been doing the whole time. Um, does everyone, was everyone good with this part of the problem? Do you want me to go over it? I can go over. No? We all understand? Everyone go with lever rule? If you're not, call me up and I can help you with it. But that's the end of the problem. So I'll pass out candy now. Woo! <laughs>